Hello, I'm Steve Muscari and welcome to Workshop Essentials. The very first thing that I ever filmed was this gadget here. And at the time, I didn't have a name for it. So I've given it a name. I've called it the Square of Thales. And I'm pleased to say that that name appears to have travelled around the world and uh, stuck. We'll talk about Mr Thales and why it's important in just a moment. But first, let's have a look at the gadget. It consists of a straight stick, and it must be straight. If it's curved like a banana, it won't work. And it's pointed at both ends. And these points should be long and slender, not short and fat, because I want to get them into a corner from various angles. There's also a swinging arm. And the pivot point must be fairly snug. I don't want any play in it at all. It's also pointed, and the points must line up exactly at both ends. Exactly there, and exactly there. I mean, not at exactly the same time, of course, otherwise it would be the square of Schrodinger, wouldn't it? Rather than the square of Thales. But this is a square because it will tell me if a corner is 90 degrees or not. So over here, for example, if I put it into the corner of my window frame here, you can see that all three points touch at the same time. And it doesn't matter whether it's up here like this or down here like this. If all three points touch, then that corner is 90 degrees. If the corner is not 90 degrees, then this will tell me which way it's out. So come with me to the door over in that corner of the workshop where it's not quite such a pretty story. If I put this into this corner here, you can see that the big arm is just a little bit loose. And that tells me that the angle is too big. It's close, but no cigar. And if I put it into this angle here, it's the small arm that's a little bit loose, which tells me that that angle is a little bit small. But when all three points touch, it means it's perfectly square. Now, all this happens because of Thales' principle. And Thales was a very old gentleman who lived in Greece before Aristotle, before Plato, before Socrates, there was Thales. And he is the first person for whom we have a name to be called a philosopher. Now, in those days, philosophy just meant all knowledge. So it included things like science and mathematics. But he was the first philosopher. And he was the first person to recognise that the corners of a triangle always add up to 180 degrees. We can demonstrate the same thing with a pencil and some hardware. If we lay these out in a triangle, we'll start with a pencil pointing towards the nut here. And if we move it through all three corners, the angle of the first corner, the angle of the second corner, and then the angle of the third corner, you can see that although it's back where it started, it's pointing in the opposite direction. It was pointing towards the knot, and now it's pointing away from the knot. And this is because it's turned through 180 degrees. And it's this nugget of information about triangles that helps us to prove that that corner back there is exactly 90 degrees. When all three points touch like this, we've got three triangles. We've got the big one, denoted by the three points, but we've also got these two smaller ones here. And these are both isosceles. That is to say, this one has got two sides which are the same length and two corners which are the same angle. Let's call these two corners alpha. This triangle is also isosceles. It's got two sides the same length and two corners the same angle. Let's call these beta. And this corner here is made up of adding an alpha to a beta. So, in the big triangle, we've got alpha plus beta plus alpha plus beta equals 180. And if 2 alpha plus beta equals 180, 
then alpha plus beta must equal 90. And what have we got in this corner? Alpha plus beta. 90 degrees exactly. QED. Now people do ask me, Steve, how is one of these better than one of these? And of course the answer is, it isn't. But if I'm doing something on a large scale, and all I've got is one of these, it's not going to be very much use to me. Plus, if this gets dropped, it's ruined. If this gets damaged, I just sharpen up the ends again, and we're good to go. Plus, on a large scale, something like this, if I wanted to try square that size, one of these on this size would cost the earth. So there are lots of advantages to using these. When we built this workshop, we'd got the concrete slab, and when it came to laying out the uh, mud sill or the sole plate on which to build the walls, we couldn't measure the diagonals because somebody had planted a big pile of building materials slap bang in the middle of the concrete. So we laid out one wall along the front, and then we used a big one of these and a piece of string to lay out the lines for the side walls and the back wall. And we built the workshop. When we'd finished and the floor was clear and we could measure the diagonals, we discovered that we were square to within five millimeters, less than five millimeters, on a building which is eight meters by eight meters. That's less than a quarter of an inch over 26 foot by 26 foot. And I think that's pretty darn good, don't you? There is another use for these as well. These days I use an MFT to handle sheet goods. But before I had my MFT, I used to use one of these and another piece of wood to set the track for my track saw. The other piece of wood that we need is this. It's um, two pieces glued together to form a rebate, or if you prefer, a rabbit. And of course you could cut it out of the solid. So if I want to cut this piece of green MRMDF, I make a pencil mark where I want the cut to be. The track goes up to the pencil mark and I get it reasonably square by eye. Then this goes over the back edge up to the back edge of the track and my square of Thales tells me exactly how far I've got to move it over in order to get it square up to there like that. And now that's on the mark, I've got three touching points and that is good to go. And that is as square as if I'd done it with an MFT and dogs or with a large roofing square. It's bang on, ready to make that cut. So why don't you make yourself a square of Thales? Or maybe several in different sizes. You'll find umpteen uses for them, both on site and in the workshop. And quite honestly, I, I wonder how I ever managed without mine. Thank you for watching. Until the next time, enjoy your workshop. Cheerio.